Milan is a modern cosmopolitan city built on a rich foundation of history. Located in northern Italy, Milan is a friendly city with great access to vacation destinations throughout Italy. Recognized for fashion and design, Milan has a population around 1.3 million, with the greater Milan area having a population of over 5 million. In this itinerary, we stayed in Milan for three and a half days, two of which included day trips to Venice and Bellagio on Lake Como. Many of the attractions can be reached by foot or the metro system. Starting in the heart of the city, the Duomo di Milano is a masterpiece in Gothic design. The Duomo is easily accessible by the metro or tram and is positioned at the edge of a large square, which hosts many outdoor events and concerts. The cathedral took nearly six centuries to complete and is the third largest church in the world. Tickets are available on site and can include access to the roof level for a close-up view of the statues that surround the cathedral and a bird's eye view of Milan. The Galleria, located on the north side of the square, offers incredible architecture and luxury shopping. This is Milan, of course. Prada, Versace, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Amani are among the luxury brands in this 150-year-old Galleria. At the center of the Galleria are four mosaic crests depicting the three capitals of the Kingdom of Italy and the city of Milan. Be sure to witness the tradition of visitors spinning three times on the bull's lower region as a token of luck, or as some locals may tell you, to demonstrate their rivalry with the city of Turin. To the east of the Duomo, the streets are lined with entertainers, casual shopping, and restaurants. Heading northwest from the piazza, you travel along a promenade toward the Sforza Castle, again with plenty of retail and dining options. The Sforza Castle is a 15th century fortification built by the Duke of Milan and houses works by da Vinci and Michelangelo. The castle has been renovated and enlarged over the centuries, as evidenced by the various building styles within the walls. Passing through the castle, the park provides locals and tourists alike a welcome retreat from the bustling city. You may also encounter concerts or entertainers in the park during the warmer months. It's a great place to enjoy a gelato in the shade of a tree. A short metro or tram ride will get you to the canal region of Milan. You'll get off at the Porto Genova station. Designed by Leonardo da Vinci to facilitate transport and commerce during the Renaissance period, the canal is now lined with restaurants, galleries and bars and is a great place to shop and dine. Be sure to stop by for an evening aperitif before heading out on the town. One of Milan's more popular attractions is the Last Supper, located in the Santa Maria delle Grazie. Be sure to purchase your tickets in advance from the official website. If you are looking for some local fare, try one of the markets. This one is located near the central train station and has a great selection of value clothing, meat, cheeses, fruits and vegetables. Search Milano Mercado for a list of markets, dates, and locations. Venice is a great day trip from Milan via high-speed train. The trip will take about two and a half hours on the Trenitalia Ferreca Rocha high-speed train. The Italian train system is modern and generally efficient, but be prepared for delays due to strikes or congestion. The trains will reach speeds of up to 300 km per hour with several stops along the way. Purchase tickets in advance through the website to ensure seating. As we traveled without luggage, we booked our seats in the second class coach. When exiting the train station, you are presented with two options to get to the center of Venice. Either the water taxi or walking. We chose to save some money and walk. Venice is a maze and you may get temporarily lost a few times. Look for the direction signs on the sides of buildings to find your way. It's about 20 minutes to the Rialto Bridge and then another 10 minutes to St. Mark's Square. The Rialto area has plenty of restaurants that line the Grand Canal. Food is expensive here and it is more economical to find a small sandwich shop on one of the side streets. If you are looking for souvenirs to take home, the Rialto does have plenty of options, but it will save you some hassle if you pick up your purchases on your way back to the train station at the end of the day. St. Mark's Square is the hub of Venice, with many of the attractions either on the square or nearby. St. Mark's Basilica, Doge's Palace, and St. Mark's Campanelle, or Bell Tower, are located on the square. Booking tickets in advance is recommended to climb the tower. 
Tickets to the Basilica and Palace can be purchased on site. However, booking in advance will significantly reduce your time in queue. Just east of the square, you'll find the Bridge of Size and a large boardwalk up the Grand Canal. The best way to experience Venice is to wander the side streets and alleyways. Many of the less expensive stores and restaurants are hidden out of view of the main square. Of course, one of the most popular things to do in Venice is to take a gondola ride on the canal. There are plenty of options throughout the city. If you book your ticket through websites like Expedia or TripAdvisor, you can save up to 50% compared to purchasing in Venice. We paid about 80 euro for a 35 minute ride. Rides can be shared or private and can include live musical entertainment. Only one and a half hours north of Milan, Bellagio is a great getaway from the bustling city. Situated at the tip of a peninsula on Lake Como, Bellagio is a beautifully kept lakeside town in the Italian Alps. The easiest way to get to Bellagio is by regional train through the city of Lecco, then onward to the towns of Verena and Asino. The trip will take about one hour. Asino is a quaint little town on the shores of Lake Como and the port for ferries going to Bellagio. Make your way down the hill to the shore and purchase a ferry ticket to Bellagio. While you wait, you can sip a cappuccino at the local hotel while taking in the beauty of the Swiss and Italian Alps. The ferry will take about half an hour to Bellagio, where you can try to spot George Clooney's villa along the shore or just take in the beauty of the lake. The ferry arrives in the heart of Bellagio, where you are greeted with luxury shopping along the harbour front. Bellagio is a hillside town with plenty of steps, but it is small enough to visit the majority of it in just a few hours. Bellagio is a town where you can aimlessly wander without getting too lost. There are a variety of stores to visit with local arts and crafts, souvenirs, and luxury items. There are some great restaurant choices in the town, and the quality of the food that we experienced was exceptional. Take the return ferry back to Asino a few hours before your scheduled train and make a visit to the fairy tale town of Verena. A small boardwalk connects the towns of Asino and Verena and makes for a nice afternoon stroll with the gelato. Milan is uniquely positioned as a great destination for train travel in Italy. Serviced by two international airports, Melpensa and Lanate, Flights to and from Milan are readily accessible from around the world. We chose to arrive and depart from the Lanate Airport due to its relative closeness to the center of Milan, about 10 or 15 minutes by taxi. Melpensa Airport to the city center will take just under an hour by train or taxi. Geographically, Milan is nicely situated for travel to Lake Como, Venice, Turin, Genoa, Verona, Bologna, and Florence within a few hours. We appreciate you watching this video of Milan. Please feel free to leave a comment and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.